Welcome back, Zero K, to another exhibition match. This time we have Flipstep and Orphilius on Deadlands. This map I've gone over recently. It's a very small map. It's a little bit odd too because it's very cake shaped, as mentioned before. It's like cake! A big chocolate cake. I'm getting hungry. I had lunch. I just like cake a lot. Yeah, small fact about me I have an insatiable sweet tooth. No. Yeah. Those of you who might have ever been curious. Insatiable. Anyway, so we're gonna have Flip Sip and Orphelius. This map is, as you can see, Hill is 21 metal between three extra extractors. Everything else is 1.8. So basically you don't get the hill very much. You can for the sake of territory, but not for the sake of economy. That doesn't do you a huge amount of good. Not for the value, at least. And otherwise... Main area, that's a very popular path, but then the center gets taken up, so then people go around the sides as a result. And once someone takes the center, the sides are pretty much the only way around. Though there's some decent hills, but this is pretty much all bot pathable, so bots can go anywhere, no real choke points. Anyway, that is that, so we'll start up right away. Flipstep starting with a clunky bot factory in the southwest side of the map, while Orphelia starts out with a shield bot factory in the northeast side of the map. And I must say, personally, I associate this map much more strongly with shield bot than with cloaky bot. If for no other reason than the size of the map and the layout of the map means the more tanky nature of shield bot factory, especially the way that you can set up a shield ball, tends to fit it really well. While cloaky bot's sneakiness tends to fall apart if they don't get a win within about 10 minutes. And apparently this is also a fairly long game, so I would get your popcorn, everybody. Actually, I should have probably recommended that before, but I didn't know because Orphilius reminded me about this game, like, now. So, yeah. Anyway. Flipstep moving around, just scouting out. Both players scouting out, nothing too fancy right now. Orphilius and Flipstep both going for about the same setup economically. Actually, Orphilius going for a much more metal-oriented, much, much less power-oriented, much more unit-oriented, too. And Flipstep, how is... Flipstep just got really far ahead. Possibly because bandits are more expensive. Wait, is there... No, Ophelius hasn't morphed. Hmm. Oh, right, early convict. That would be the difference. Flipstep didn't go for any early rector. They're just now getting the rector, actually. And setting up these glaives, I don't know that they've lost any. I don't think they have. So right now, those glaives are doing fine getting out of the way. But they know where Orphelius is, they know what Orphelius is up to. They don't know that they could actually tear apart every single one of these metal extractors at no cost to themselves. Well, not this last one. This last one would be a bit tricky. But the rest of them, yeah, they could tear it apart with no cost to themselves. At least the first one or two. Thug coming in, though. Very early Thug from Orphelius. I'm not quite sure I understand, but I can sort of see the value. That Thug might be a bit of a problem, though. Ooh, nice dodge. Nice juke by Flipstep. I'm pretty sure that was... Yeah, that was not... That was not the AI. That was Flipstep. Unfortunately, despite that really nice juke, they did not quite manage to get away. Their glaive got caught. However, that's not the really important thing. The really important thing is this second pair of glaives. Unfortunately, they are also out of position from each other. One of them goes down for free. The other one, no support, so it needs to run away. Retreating away. Flipstep wisely playing that out of the way. Now, Flipstep... They're looking like they're kind of trying to go more economic overall. They're taking the center quite quickly, a bit faster than Orphelius has been. They have a strong, much, much stronger energy economy. Orphelius, they only have one solar collector. So they have the six from the commander and two from the solar collector, and that is it. I'm also a little curious, how much wind is there? 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Okay, so wind on the hill is great. Wind up here is pretty good. So yeah, wind in the main base would actually, oops, wind in the main base would be fine. Oh no, 0 0.3, that's not great. So over here, it starts to be pretty good. And on the hill, it's awesome. But anyway, Gremlin coming in for scouting purposes. Flipstep wants to have that hidden scout. Wants to know exactly what's going on in Orphelius' base, and they should be able to, if they're careful about it, and they aren't. Those bandits will intercept. If Flipstep moves this right now, they have a chance. I don't think that's going to happen, though. Flipstep, they know that those bandits are there, but those bandits now know a Gremlin is there. No, they don't. Never m Oh, no, no, now they do. Now they've spotted it. Orphelia is now pulling back to get rid of the gremlin. And the gremlin being self-destructed to avoid sending a reclaim wreck. But nope, not quite going to happen. Wanted to avoid donating that, though. Wise choice. If no unit's likely to die, I'm pretty sure they still don't drop reclaim when they self-destruct. 
that's a good thing to do. And Orphilius taking the center, actually. Flips up not focusing as well on that. They got the first part of the center faster, but they didn't get the hill. So Orphilius on the hill, that is going to be difficult to deal with. At the same time, Flipstep has started to expand along the sides, but Orphilius has already taken the southeast corner. Flipstep trying to set that up as well. Both players going for southeast, and Flipstep also going northwest. Which is kind of interesting. I mentioned before that I find players will often expand counterclockwise when they start up corners. Looks like in this case, Flipstep actually expanding in both directions. Not just going south, and Orphilius not primarily going north either. Which is interesting, and we see a Roach coming in here, trying to get rid of Flipstep's commander, getting sniped. <sighs> Not sure exactly what was expected there. The Roach would be spotted, and a Racer alongside would have been much stronger. But even then, not enough. I think the Roach, what's that? Yeah, 1200 damage, so it wouldn't have killed the commander. It would have been pretty damaging, though. It would have killed the Glaives around it. Bandit follow-up would have been devastating, and at this point, the center of the map now belongs to Orphilius. They have taken it. And the south side as well, it's going to be hard to dislodge, but nowhere near as hard as the center will be. So at this point, Flipstep really needs to go around. They need to take advantage of the cloaky bot. Yeah, the cloaky bot sneakiness. They need to go around Orphelius. And to that end, I think they'll probably be okay. They pretty much have the south now. Orphelius running away from that expansion attempt. They have the north as well, but... Well, they have the north. The dirt bag, of all things, the dirt bag taking care of that expansion. But that can be easily dealt with. However, Orphilius sending in a thug and... Well, just a thug. Just to follow up and tear apart the north side. But Flipstep is ahead economically. There's no denying that. Flipstep is ahead. And we see Flipstep has also morphed their commander. No, never mind. They haven't morphed their commander. It's Orphilius that morphed their commander. They have the walrus. They are the walrus. Flipstep is the cheese. I... I'm getting weird songs in my head right now after saying that. Anyhow, Flipstep unfortunately losing those... No, lost one of the Glaives, not the other one. Did get rid of the radar. Nicely done. Orphilius right now. Not in the dark, though. They have radar in the most important spot on the map, so they basically have a map hack at this point with the radar in the center like that. Getting rid of the Defender, though. Flipstep, very good choice. Very good target. That means any head-on attack is not going to have that to deal with. And in fact, the main base just has the one... Uh, two Lotuses now. But if they can get through either of those Lotuses, that main base... That's going to be heavily damaged, and Orphilius at this point, economically behind. Their commander as well, taking a bit of damage, but those hammers, why are they moving forward? Why are they moving forward? Flipstep was not paying attention there. They lost those hammers without any real cause. That was unfortunate. So yeah, Orphilius has the center strongly, Flipstep has the sides fairly strongly, and has an economic advantage, military roughly parity. But these glaives... Looks like they're going to go around the side, try to harass out the Lotus, try to get rid of more metal extractors, constantly making Orphilius second guess going to the center. And constantly forcing Orphilius to split up their forces or lose economy. So this is... This is tricky on, Fel on Flipstep's part, and Orphilius is pulling back. They do want to get rid of these glaives. They do actually want to get rid of this expansion entirely. Looks like Flipstep was in fact moving defensively, not offensively. And Orphilius' commander... Not moving back to deal with that, but the Thug goes down, neither of the Glaives damaged in the process. But now these Bandits are going to be a much bigger problem, that Lotus is not there, there's just the Glaive. There's just the Metal Extractors that are completely defenseless. Flipstep getting damaged, they're actually going to lose a bit of their economic strength right now. Should point out Orphilius has built up enough energy, they are actually pretty healthy for energy right now. So they might be economically behind in metal, but they're fine for energy. And actually, Flipstep hasn't been using their metal as well as they could have been. They are now, but they're still... Their energy could be a little bit healthier. So right now, Flipstep hasn't really lost much from losing those metal extractors yet. They need more power plants. Once they get those, then it'll make a difference. Then they'll start burning through the storage. Then they'll need the metal extractors to work with. But right now, not so big of a deal. They have it in storage. And another solar plant gets closed. Flipstep basically losing the entire north side while taking the south side. So ultimately, while it didn't quite happen organically, it looks like we are going to see roughly counterclockwise expansion in practice. And Orphilius' commander taking a lot of damage. It's, well, it's getting hit. It's forced to retreat. Are those rockets going to be able to get to it? It looks like no. Orphilius' commander able to get out of there. Wasn't sure. That was kind of... Harrowing. I mean, at this point, Orphilius does need their commander. That's a third of their economy right there. If they lose their commander, that is a huge chunk. 
possibly the game, and Flipstep moving in to the southeast. Sorry, not the southeast, the east from the southeast. Finishing up that assault, and there were some Rockos here as well earlier. Now moving in, but Orphilius managed to push that back. Orphilius is commander at this point. 700 health left. What does it have? Rocket launcher and range. So that is good, but not great when it comes to trying to survive. Still has 3,000 health though, so not bad. At any rate, it looks like Orphilius does have the center basically gone. Flips have taken that. Orphilius does take the southeast, though. Orphilius has been really breaking these peripheral expansions while at the same time Flipstep, I'm guessing that might have been part of their plan, was distract Orphilius along the periphery and then take the center. I, I know you're going to go to the periphery, so I'll now take the center as you're just dealing with the periphery and, and do my best to slow you down while you're dealing with the periphery as well, allowing the center to be taken out. But at this point, the two have actually been fairly neck and neck. For military and economy and position, like Orphilius... Remember, the center doesn't give you all that much. What it gives you is a defensible position so that you can't rush the center. So you can't take the shortest path. So Orphilius can take the shortest path to this giant wall of defenders. Flipstep, however, cannot take the shortest path. Well, they can now. The defenders are gone. They actually can take the center. Now the center has been opened up, and Orphilius has lost that foothold along the, that one hill. And a Faraday, why not? Because we don't see enough Faradays. And they're great against shields. Because an EMP unit has no shields. And it looks like Flipstiff's Rockos are dead. Flipstiff's expansion might be dead. Oh, this is going to be very close. I don't think it's going to work. I think the defenders are not going to be built up in time. They are not going to be built up in time, in fact. Neither of these rectors are going to be able to get away in time. Rocco trying to help, but one of the rectors does go down. The second rector almost... Okay, the second rector does escape. It'll escape in cloak and will be fine. And the Sniper, because at this point, it looks like a Thugloth Felon Ball is building up. And they're actually wrong. It's not a Thugloth Felon Ball yet. It might be eventually, but not yet. However, against shield sharpshooters aren't a bad idea regardless. With the amount of Thugs, it's actually probably worth it. And Orphelia's throwing in the towel. No, that's not right. That GG, I'm pretty sure, is insincere. But we'll see. I mean, Orphilius is actually not doing badly. They're ahead militarily, slightly. They're slightly ahead economically, actually. They're doing fine. I see they're discouraged because this defender nest is difficult to get through. But if they'd managed to take out the sharpshooter and take out the, the commander... I mean, Orphilius' commander is two shots away from dying. Yeah, Laura pointing out, ahead an army, ahead an eco. They're ahead. Orphilius is ahead. The only thing they're having a problem with is this one sharpshooter, which... Are they gonna... Is it gonna go down? Hard to say. Oh, that rogue does not quite get to it. That is unfortunate. Orphelia is not managing to get that rogue there when they need it. But it does kind of hint at where it is. So as long as Orphelia can hold that back, keep the defender... Sorry, keep the commander defended. Nanolith and more range. Yeah, if they can get rid of that, then they should be okay. And Orphelia... They're, it looks like they're trying to get Flipstip's commander. That will help a lot if they manage to do so. And going... Okay. This is Orphelius' thing. We haven't seen this yet. Well, we've seen this. If you've watched previous games with Orphelius, we've seen this. The Dirt Bag rush down. Hit everything with Dirt Bag. And given the, sh the lack of forces Flipstip has in support, these Dirt Bags might actually do the trick. In fact, yeah, that Flipstep's commander is taking a lot of damage. The Faraday is doing a bit, but looks like Flipstep is about to lose their commander. Are they going to lose it? They are not? Maybe? I don't know. The dirtbags are starting to get disabled. Or not disabled, they're starting to get EMP'd. As is the commander, but Glaive support coming in, and that should finish it. The dirtbag's not quite able to deal with the... Whoa! Maybe? I don't think it matters anymore. The remaining forces with the Thug and the Outlaw coming in... Granted, being blocked by the dirtbag corpses. Ironically. Exactly what Orphelius, or what Orphelius did not want, but Flipstep losing their commander anyway. And Orphelius, at the same time, takes most of the territory on the map. That was a nice kill, and Orphelius' commander themselves, still alive. Their commander has not died yet. So Orphelius losing their, or killing their opponent's commander, keeping their own, keeping their military and economic leads. And actually not losing a whole lot to destroy the commander. The dirtbags are quite cheap, and they leave very little reclaim. Like, right now, the biggest source of reclaim is that one... So that's 
530 metal. If you were to look at... Wow, that's a lot of dirt bags. Okay, I think you can finish the dirt bags now. Oh, no, no, you can't. No, you can't. Find that sniper first, then you can finish. Yeah, about a third of that is the commander. But yeah, find the snipers first. Kill the snipers. And then you can... Don't jump into the Faraday, and then you can finish. But yeah, finding the snipers is hugely important. It's unfortunately the only follow-up force is a dirt bag. Though on the other hand, it does mean that this area here is going to become a sniper graveyard because I'm not going to have anywhere to move. As the dirt bags die, where's the follow-up force that's not dirt bags? Outlaw thug. Okay. Unfortunately, not the best combination. So the sharpshooter is able to get away, able to get out of this giant hilly area. That's wow, that is hilly. Yeah, the dirtbag graveyard not going to do them a whole load of good, sadly. Anyway, Orphelius right now is... Oh, Orphelius is actually lagging out a lot, apparently. They're at three seconds ping in this game. Ouch. That is painful. They're actually doing quite well, despite it. I gotta say, they're, they're doing pretty well despite it. And they're clearly playing for it. They're going for Thug Outlaw, which... Admittedly, you want the Outlaws under the shields. So it's not the least micro-intensive build you can go for. But shield bots in general are much less micro-intensive than cloaky bots, so I can see the rationale behind that. Especially behind all the static defense as well. And Orphelius' commander... Nice and safe behind their defenses. They don't want to move forward. Not until those sharpshooters are well and truly dealt with. And how many are there? There's two. No future ones have been, dealt, have been built. Orphelia's going for a light vehicle factory. Probably going to go for Wolverine support. Just to deal with all those defenses. Probably going to see Wolverine, Thuglaw, Felon. All together once we get to the end. Those thugs going down one at a time. Not able to do much. I am very surprised no bandits have been built right now. I'm really surprised, actually. Just for, or just fewer dirt bags as screening force for these, but to actually have the follow-up of the Thug and Rogue. That's the one thing I find odd about Orphelius' play right now, has been that they've been building a lot of dirt bags or Thugs and Rogues and Outlaws. Not both at the same time to use as combined arms. Which I find strange. Seems like together that would work better, but maybe I'm wrong. At any rate, Orphelius reclaiming along the side. Nice setup with the workers. Not actually reclaiming this yet, but that's 16 metal. Not a big deal. Yeah, defending that area. They've pretty much taken half of the map at this point. And Flipstip, they're just about to take the remaining half of the map. But having their commander, Orphelius, does have an economic advantage resulting from this. Which means, even if they are split evenly, Orphelius is still ahead. And of course, reclaim. Reclaim is always nice. And there are the Wolverines, as expected. Wolverine, 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 Thuglaw, no felon, at least not yet. But Wolverine's also really good for screening against the snipers. Possibly better than, than everything else, because the dirt bags are considerably more expensive than zero, which is the cost of an individual claw. Okay, they, they're listed as one, but they're basically free. I don't think it costs money to fire, but at the same time, the way zero K is, that's... You wouldn't even notice a change in spending like that. So it looks like Orphilius, they are setting up a nice army to go for a push. Wolverines just to nicely set up a screening wall and then everything else to run on top of that minefield. Go over to the other side and deal with it. Also nice defenses over in the northeast with the Stardust. That looks like it will be taken care of by the Rocco. Yeah, the Roccos will take care of the Stardust right now. So that Stardust... Its days are pretty numbered. Oh, nice! Orphelia's just attacking. Okay, that was clever. Orphelia's attacking at the edge of the Stardust range, relying on the Stardust projectile actually lasting a bit longer than its max range. Killing a Rocco in the process. Stardust still died, but that was good thinking. That was pretty cool. Anyway, flipped up at this point, going for Fusion Reactor, but no Factory Switch. Continuing to build up Cloaky Bus... In theory, looks like they have priority set up. Yeah, they have. No, they don't. What? That's not priority. Okay, that's okay. The factory is at low priority. That's why. Yeah, in case you're wondering, whenever I'm talking about that, it's this icon right here. That's the priority. If it's red, it's low. If it's green, it's high. And if it's gray, it's neutral. High stuff always happens first, and then whatever resources are left goes to neutral stuff, and then whatever resources are left after that goes to low priority stuff. So the factory in low priority means. If no resources are left after every other construction project, it gets nothing. Which also means Orphilius does have not only a military advantage, 
Despite the economic parity, Flipchip is actually falling behind economically because of this fusion, or er, falling behind militarily because of the fusion reactor. So Aurelius is able to get quite a lot in here because that fusion reactor is being built. Once that's done, though, that is going to be a powerful source of overdrive, and that is also going to be, right there with enough caretakers, all the energy that Flipstip will ever need to power the forces, and it's done. It is finished, but no overdrive yet. I guess once the energy is a little bit healthier, we'll start to see overdrive. We'll start to see metal build up. And at this point, we still have... Oh, Gauss turret coming in here. How many Gauss turrets are there? These are unusual. You don't see Gauss turrets very much, nor do you see Faraday's all that often. Stardust have been something that has become more popular in the last couple months, but Gauss and Faraday, not so much. Those have been rare. And nice to close it up in just the right position so that this caretaker is completely stunned out. Can't heal the Gauss turret because of the other claw that's, that's getting hit by the Faraday. That is going to be nice for Orphilius. Bit of a stroke of luck, but that's got... Okay, Flips have taken care of that, but still, that was amusing. That was very amusing. Although it looks like even then, the claw is getting hit by the Faraday. The Faraday is going to be working... This is why the Faraday is not that popular. The claws are kind of working against... Or the Faraday is working against everything else thanks to the claws. It's stunning out everything else. Unfortunately, the Wolverine's not next to their the forces they're meant to be supporting. Now, for reference, I don't think they can pass. No, they can't go along the sides. There's a... F yeah, they can't go along the sides. They'd have to go around the back first. And it looks like Orphilius might be trying, but they'd have to break through this wall first. And if they can break through the wall, they've kind of already won. In fact, no, nice! Oh, I didn't even notice this flip step coming in with the northwest to the... This hero glaive, completely unsung until just now after its deed has long since been done. And breaking some of Orphilius's metal extractor lead. Still, that fusion reactor's done, the overdrive has kicked in, and we're looking at about two times, or one and a half times to two times overdrive, thanks to that. Powerful stuff there. Now, Orphilius at this point... They are looking pretty good. They're still ahead militarily. They do have the Aspas up. I'm surprised they haven't gotten a felon up yet. I'm really surprised they haven't gotten a felon up yet. The only reason I think they haven't is because of the sharpshooter. That makes sense. That's the only reason I could think that would make sense. They don't want to lose their units to the sharpshooter. And Convict's coming in here to help both with shields and with static defenses. Not with repair, mind you, just with shields and static defenses. Are they? Wait. They aren't linking. That's strange. They're at the edge of linking, but yet they're not linking. I guess there's just too much There's too much shield energy. I think that's how it works. They can only link up to a certain level. Yeah, that's, that's how it works. The Aspas needs to recharge on its own. Anyway. Orphelia is still actually falling behind economically. Flipstips have switched over to Warriors, and that is quite effective. They have... Now that the, the Fusion Reactor is done, they do have that all that stuff set up, so they can actually build up quite nicely. Uh, the Fusion Reactor, having been completed, means that their Caligula Factory is actually building stuff now. So Orphilius' nice little reprieve from having to deal with new units from Flipstip, that's finished. That's over. That's done. And Flipstip looks like they're going to go try to go around the back. Orphilius, however, has set up their power plants in such a way that they can't easily be attacked. They'd have to go through the long way, hit a bunch of Lotuses, and that would be tricky. Not obviously unbeatable, just harder than it would have been, say, 10 minutes ago. Flipstep, however, continuing to take a lot of damage to the front. Continuing to kind of just be broken down. Caretaker goes down, so that like, Gauss turret is completely open. That can be taken out pretty quick. Once the Gauss turret is down, I think we'll see Flipstep try to go for a frontal assault. I mean, sorry, Orphelius go for a frontal assault? Not Flipstep. Flipstep probably won't go for the counter assault. Flipstep might go for a rear assault, but I think they're not going to bother. Norphilius' commander moving to get rid of these defenders. They have been spotted. Ooh, that is bad. I mean, the defender's now running out of ammo, so Norphilius should be able to take care of this. Yeah, one rocket per defender. That'll be fine. So that defender nest is dead. But over in the center of the map, that Gauss turret is almost down. Faraday still being a problem, though. But here we have the possible culmination of this attack. Coming in with the gunship switch and flipstep. Did they have anything yet? No, they have one rapier under production. Nothing else besides that rapier and this fusion reactor. They've got to be careful. They're going to take out the fusion reactor. 
They don't want to hit it too far, too quickly. They want to hit everything else. Although I suppose if they're going to die, they might as well go for it. It's just, you got to be careful. You don't want to hit that when you're too close to it. But yeah, the outlaw going behind the power plant, slowing down everything, well, mostly slowing down everything, not dealing a huge amount of damage, just dealing slow. And sharpshooter to get rid of one of the outlaws. That fusion reactor is not going to go down, I don't think. Commander, however, being nice and up front, able to probably attack the southeast. That fusion reactor, nope, not going down. The outlaw trying to do its best. But the outlaw and Aspis together, that's it. That Aspis, ouch. 550 metal, all donated. Now the caretaker right there, that's 400 metal donated. 550 was the cost originally. With 1% left, ow, that is painful. That is super painful. That fusion reactor was almost dead. And we don't see any other factory search, so yeah, light vehicle actually is not being used right now. The Wolverines, I guess, have been finished their use. I, I would think a slash would work nicely. No, Orphelius is... What the hell? Okay, never mind. No, they haven't been building anything there. The factory panel just got confused, but otherwise, no. It looks like Flipster's going to be able to... Are they going to take it back with rapiers? I think they might. There isn't any anti-air. Not even flex AA. Like, the thugs can't hit air well enough. The outlaws sort of can. Felon finally... Oh, that would have been that's so painful. That would have been great about five minutes ago. Granted, with the sharpshooters, that actually wouldn't have worked out too well. The sharpshooters, however, one of them's dead, the other one's still alive. Remains a problem. The sharpshooter, whoever, taking a bit of damage. getting It's getting spotted. Orphilius always knows where that sharpshooter is. Roughly. And yeah, I know Felon dies a sharpshooter, but if you get rid of the sharpshooter first, then it's fine. And you almost had. It's more that it would have meant that this fusion reactor would have been dead. Which would have destroyed a lot of the rest of the base, and possibly been able to break down the entire base, just leading to the win. At this point, though, Orphelius is still ahead. They haven't really fallen behind that far. Their commander is in a very forward position, not necessarily recommended. Especially being that as a rocket commander, not a missile commander. So hitting these rapiers will be a small problem. Still two shots them, so that's fine. Two shots them, leads them nicely. It's just... Oh, if it fires right as they juke, that's the only problem. And it did. Although even then, that Lotus is a problem, the bandit's a problem. These rapiers don't have much of a chance. In all honesty. Another rapier goes down, and with that, Flipstip... They have three rapiers. They're still, they still have rapiers. But Orphilus has a lot of routes to attack from. That felon is probably dead, though. Nope, it's not dead. It's not up. It's not met up with its forces, though. And now Orphilus throws in the towel. That is the actual game. I still think Orphilus probably had a bit of a chance. They had a lot of the map left. Like, they had a lot of the map they could take. They had quite a bit of damage they could deal. I think if they got for slashes for a little bit of extra flex AA and another target for the sharpshooter to distract it with, that might have worked out. Oh well, anyway, I guess they were just tired. I mean, that was half an hour. I can't blame them. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. That is... Oh yeah, Orphelia was thinking, they should have just banned bandits after the fusion push. Hmm, let's think about that. So if they'd spam bandits at that point, which is about now, they would have had this area would have been open. More or less. I suppose they had six... Yeah, if they had six or seven bandits, they probably could have dealt with the fusion reactor directly, destroyed that, dealt with a lot of the rest of the base. If they were careful about their micro or the bandits, only lost one or two to the fusion explosion... They might have been able to take out the rest of the base in the process. Yeah, actually, bandits might have been a good idea. Because by that point, they would have built, like, constantly streaming out bandits. They had enough money, they could have been streaming out, like, I think one every three or four seconds? So yeah, that would have been a lot of bandits. And also would t would have killed all the rest of the stuff that was being built. With, yeah, even the Zeus. Yeah, everything would have gone down. So, yeah, bandits, or Phileas knows what they should have done next game. Next time this happens, they know what to do. As does everyone who's watched this now. Build bandits when you see the situation. Well, this particular situation. It's obviously 0k being the kind of game it is. The, ne the situations never quite come up the same way a second time. But if you find a similar situation, go with that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me tonight. I will have the material up as soon as either I find a way to make VSDC work for me, or I rebuild it in Blender. If it's the latter, don't expect it until tomorrow at the very earliest, possibly Monday. Thank you once again for watching, and have a good night, everybody.